and we are going to be discussing all things chills, thrills, and kills. Kate and I are going to be talking about our favorite books, TV shows, and movies that are in the thriller or crime fiction genre, as well as some reading habits and other items related to how we met on Bookstagram um, that will fit in with this podcast. So thank you so much for joining us, and we hope that you have fun and get totally terrified. (laughs) Every time, I feel like every time Kate and I talk about an author, it could be like her name's Paula and we're like is it Paula or Pala? Like <laughs> yeah. I always like second guess so I'm glad that we know Hallie yeah. Sutton. Totally. Yep, Hallie rhymes with Sally. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um so how is this week going for you because this is a huge week for you. It's crazy. I it feels very surreal. Like my publicist today sent me an email and she was like five days till the book was out. And I was like, that can't be right. Like, <laughs> It's very, it's very exciting. It feels very surreal, lots of anxiety. Uh, but you know, at this point, I've, like there's not, I, I hands off, it's good. It's going to be out in the world and we're going to see how it does, but it's, it's crazy yeah. exciting. And it feels very different from when my first book came out. Cause this time I'll be doing in-person events. So it is, it's a change. That's exciting. It's a yeah, totally. That's very exciting. Yes. Well, you know, that's a really good, the the Hurricane Blonde is the book we're we're talking about. Yeah. And um, this is an excellent book to have any author event, let alone a live in-person author event for, because there's so much to discuss about this story. And Mm -hmm. I think personally, you're going to see a lot of like groups of people because this is an excellent like book club pick. Yeah. This is not something you want to read alone. Oh, totally. Yes. You don't like, want to be alone with this book. You don't <laughs> want to be alone <laughs> in your feelings with this one. Like, I am the biggest, like, fan of thrillers that have, like, bleak, dark, like, undertones <laughs> in them. And when I tell you I was, like, reading this, I was like, this book was written for me. Like, this is, like, my soulmate in a book. I just, like cannot get over how amazing this story is thank you so much that really means a lot to me thank you so much our book club is only two people but if we had more (laughs) we would have had more people to discuss it with but like (laughs) we have not shut up about this so thank you we haven't i'm loving it i started reading it and i started like immediately texting him i'm like oh my god She's like, page two, you're going to love it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm so glad to hear you say that. I'm so glad the darkness wasn't a turnoff for you because this book does go deep into the darkness. And I know that can be polarizing for people, but that was the story I wanted to write. So (laughs) I loved it. I love it. And nothing is too dark dark. to me. Yeah. yeah, Animal violence is the only thing that like. No, no, goodness. No, no, no. 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 it scares me. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the only thing. Every now and then we power through one, but yeah, as long as you're, as long as the animals are safe, you know, do whatever. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Never would never hurt an animal in the book. Yeah, that doesn't need to be. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. I never remember like I was talking to like Karen Slaughter, who was like (laughs) the queen of like dark crime fiction, right? Yeah. uh I'm like one thing I like respect is that I read like 25 of your books in the last year, and like you never have any, and she's like, and I never will. Like yeah. there's never <laughs> any animal violence in her book. She's like, people, like no one's safe. Like you do not want to yes. be in the first like chapter of a Karen totally. Slaughter book, but like <laughs> all the animals are safe. So we also love that about Hallie yes. Sides. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think it's the fastest way to lose a reader, to be honest with you, is animal violence. And so, yes, that's yeah. not, mm-hmm. and it, it doesn't usually, um, for me, it's not something I'm interested in. But that said, that like not a lot else was off the table, particularly with this book. And I I think that sort of fits my view of like the dark underside of Hollywood and fame and all these people with unchecked power and money and really mm-hmm. wanting to try to dive into that. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. This year, kind of last year too, I apparently got obsessed with stories that take place in Hollywood. So I was super excited when Gare mentioned this, like, I can't even remember back when we were talking about like books we were excited for, for the summer. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's in Hollywood. I can't stop reading books that are in Hollywood. Um, What, like, what made you want to write about, like, kind of like the underbelly that you were just talking about? 
Yeah, you know, I grew up really obsessed with old Hollywood lore and stories. Um, I think I did a History Day project on Clara Bow when I was like nine or 10. Um, and when I moved to LA back in 2015, it was something I was really fascinated by is like, there's Hollywood and then there's Los Angeles and they're very different. And Hollywood is the industry. And it's also this kind of myth and idea. Um, and it tells really interesting stories about itself. And sometimes those stories are really dark. And in particular, I was really fascinated by this sort of fascination that, um, Hollywood and Hollywood lore experts have around like young women who have died, which is it's horrible tragedies and really sad. And we could go deep into those because I have a lot of feelings about a lot of them, but it's also so kind of not representative of the crime that actually does happen in Los Angeles. And yet these women are like Black Dahlia is kind of like the Uber, you know, dead girl here in Los Angeles. And so that's why mm -hmm. she kind of starts the book too. Um, and it, so I was just really interested in like, what is the sort of tension between the golden glitz of Hollywood and also this like very real danger that these women were in this kind of uh, poor outcomes. And then also how does that relate to Los Angeles as a whole? Because they're very different. They're like two separate things. And I don't think I really fully understood that until I moved here and was like, oh yeah, I, Hollywood is not really part of my experience of being an Angelino. And yet it's also the lifeblood of the city. You know, we're in the middle of a, writer strike and an actor strike and like obviously I support both um but how much that's impacting the economy and you know kind of the lifeblood of the city too it's it's I don't know it's a really interesting tension I find that really creatively um invigorating yes wow oh my god I that love was you. a great answer <laughs> oh, I'm like oh there's like little hearts coming off my head right yes. now yes like, god I could listen to you talk all day yeah thank you <laughs> I will if you'll let me so <laughs> how long have you lived in Los Angeles I moved here in 2015 for grad school um so I grew up in northern California and then I lived in the Bay Area for a while um and I had never really imagined myself living in Los Angeles and then when I was deciding to go to grad school I was kind of like well two years. It's an adventure. I don't know that I'll like LA. I kind of imagined that I wouldn't. And then I got here and I was like, oh, I love it. So <laughs> I, yeah. yeah, it's, is this is my city. Yeah. That's amazing. That. So obviously like you've been there for a while and, you know, like you said, like the thing that I love about this book and Kate, feel free to like, tell me to shut up at any time. Cause like, sometimes they get wrapped up and I don't want to spoil anything. So if like anything, <laughs> yeah, yeah. um, <laughs> but the, the thing that I love about your book is I feel like right now there's a very big trend with people writing crime fiction to kind of be like, be wary of how much you love true crime mm -hmm. because it's not it's not a Karen Slaughter book. It's not something fictional. It's not a movie, you know, when you're like, oh my God, like, did you hear like, this is wild. I love this. Like, and people are like, they're still real victims at the end of the day with mm -hmm. this. So, you mm -hmm. know, like, even though like you're interested in true crime, like just be careful of your words and stuff. And the thing that I love about this one is that you took that trend and you really like put it into the Hollywood glamour the glitz and then like you said like the underbelly of what really happens and my favorite thing about this was how you kind of touched on the fact that there are things in this book that are either mentioned or that happen or you know like are discussed on the tour you know that Salma mm -hmm. does about famous people mm -hmm. who have crimes happen to them and you also touch on the fact that there are crimes like this that happen all of the time in Hollywood mm -hmm. to women who aren't as famous or aren't as well known. Yeah. And the way that you walk that line was brilliant for oh, me. And I loved you so how you did that because you really did touch on the fact that like, yes, like the paparazzi did love to chase Lindsay Lohan. But like when all of these things came out about, you know, Harvey Weinstein and everything came out about that, I remember being on Twitter and there was a list that came out and it was like, here are some of the people that are testifying against him in court that have said that they had experiences with, with him. And a lot of people were like, well, who's this person? Who's that person? Really? You know? And it's like, this is somebody who you don't know as well because they weren't in front of the camera mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. but they still had the same experience of the woman that was in every 90s movie that you loved you know so when you like created this story like what was the first thing that popped into your mind to be like okay I'm gonna like keep going and like have that snowball effect with this because like there's something here Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. First of all, that's very kind oh, of you. And, and, <laughs> and also to your point there about Weinstein, like that wasn't a mistake, right? Like this was a man with unchecked power and he was also targeting, right. I mean, he was targeting really big actors and he was also targeting people who like definitely would not have the power to say anything if their story came to light or would just be kind of hushed up and hushed up by the studio because there's too much money involved, right? Like that's usually right. what it is. It's like, there's too much on the line. Mm-hmm. So when I was thinking about crafting this, I was really trying to Yeah, I have my own obsession and critique of true crime and my own uh, ambivalence about like, there are these true crime tour buses that happen in Hollywood and I've taken many of them and I love them. I think it's a really interesting way to look at the history. And I'm also uncomfortable with the way in which it's sort of like glorifying these true crimes that happen to people. And then there's also tension that I was kind of trying to explore in Selma's bus tour, which features all young dead women of like, it's a privilege to have your story told when you've been murdered in this way. And yet it's a privilege that nobody would ever want. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to be known for just this thing, or it's also flattens you the black Dahlia. Everybody has a theory about who she was and why she was murdered and who killed her. And along the way, the actual person gets lost. It's lost behind a nickname, right? Elizabeth short. Um, And so I was kind of trying to think of all the different tentacles that um, would reach a person under under these circumstances, like everyone from, you know, the cast and crew who've been abused to uh, the women whose stories they tell to other people in Los Angeles whose stories don't get told because of, you know, that they're not famous, they're not powerful. And so um, I'm really glad to hear that that worked for you. That was something I definitely was trying to right into a sort of the meta-ness of it all of like there's a true crime bus tour there's an author who's famous for writing this true crime book which Salma has this really um ambivalent relationship with herself in which it's like it made her sister really famous after her death but it made her famous mostly for her death and right. what do you do what do you do with that kind of kind of narrative and who gets to tell the story you know in the book there's also the director Cal who's making a movie that's like his experience of the sister and all of it is just kind of these narratives around even Salma's memories of her sister it's like it's not from her sister's point of view it's how Salma looks at her it's there's sort of once the person has become the dead girl there's sort of no real way for them to have a voice and I was also very conscious of that and uncomfortable of that myself when I was writing this book that like am I kind of perpetuating this but that was also sort of the thing that I wanted to explore right yeah, yeah, I mean, no, I don't think that you were insensitive in no. that at all. I think that you, you definitely like put a spotlight on those people. Like, there's so many crime fiction books like right now that they're like, um, you know, remember the victims. Like, mm-hmm. everybody knows Ted Bundy, but nobody knows any of his victims' names. You know, right. and so like you were just kind of like, okay, here you go. And the thing that I really wanted to mention before I forget too that I loved was I noticed like like you said, like when Selma is talking about her sister, it's like who she was as a person, her personality, Mm -hmm. the things that she did, like whether they were good or bad, these memories. And then when everybody else talked about her, it was the negative, the paparazzi, Mm -hmm. the press, like all of these other kind of like things. We're all about her body. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just, yeah, I think, I think that you did that fantastic like I was blown away there's so many like layers in this story that like no matter what works for you in crime fiction you're gonna find it in this book thank you so much oh man you're making a lot of my like debut day anxiety go away this is great this is great for my (laughs) self-esteem thank you (laughs) yeah if anybody has anything negative to say about this book you just send them to Kate and I and we'll take care of them yes (laughs) (laughs) I so you were talking about Cal earlier and he was such a I don't even know what to say. Kind of a stereotype is like part of what I'm trying to say in a a more positive version. But were you like kind of thinking or were there any like directors or actors that like inspired him? (laughs) Oh, yes. Some that I'm not going to name as specifically um, because they're alive um, and I don't want to get sued. I mean, not that uh, whatever, but like, uh, yeah, I definitely that was like one of the avenues. So 
going into this book, I had a background where I knew, um, I had like done a fair amount of research on old, old Hollywood, older Hollywood stories. Um, and I'm happy to share some of those too. And that was like my own personal interest, just like throughout my life, like yeah. things that I've read, you know, and there's a lot of things that Salma talks about in the book, which are all based on, um, at least kind of the mythology, you know, whether or not it's actually true, but like, there's a story in there about Clark Gable, uh, that is like very much like based on a real thing that came out after he died. Um, and so one of the areas where I did a lot of proactive research was bad director behavior, because it was something that I was very interested in. And you see it in other actors, um, too, you know, not only men, but often men who are very powerful and very like well-respected, but I did a lot of, uh, research into different directors. So everything that Cal does on set is like based on some real story or anecdote that I read that he is like, I, I know what you mean when you say stereotype, he's kind of like stands in for, he's like the bad director, right? Like yeah. the ultimate bad director. And mm -hmm. so, um, a lot of it is based on, you know, there's some really horrible stories about Hitchcock, about Polanski, um, about Quentin Tarantino, about, you know, just the things that they have done to elicit um, performances out of people. And I'm, I, I find it, I don't have a very good or tight answer for what the crossplay between this is, but it seems like there are really artistic, talented directors who also gravitate towards the position because you get to run your own little kingdom. You get to be God and just, <laughs> you know, enact your will on other people. And it it's really uh, horrifying when you dive into it. I mean, there's one, and I actually can't remember um, who the director was. I think he was a French director. There's a story about him not believing that his leading lady was going to be able to perform being drugged. So he drugged her without her knowledge. And this was like in oh the sixties. And then gets the take from her and takes her immediately to the hospital get, to get her stomach pumped. I mean, just like things across oh the board that are just fascinating and hor I mean, horrifying more than they're fascinating, but you're just sort of like, why do we give people a pass in the making of art, even if it's great art? Like, why is this allowed? Why is this, why is this even an option for some people, you know? And, yeah. and also to some extent, you're like, do you not trust your actors? These are trained people. Like they don't have to experience it in order to show it, I would think. Um, but there seem to be a lot of people who think differently. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was going to be my follow-up question is like, kind of through the whole book, you're exploring like, what is allowable for the like price of art mm -hmm. and then kind of like what lengths some people will go to to be like oh it's almost real and it, it, I'm just doing it for art that's why yeah. I'm doing it and then they get away with it right and it's we give this weird pass to um yeah to artists in a, in an interesting way. I mean, I was really obsessed with a podcast last year called death of an artist, which was about, um, the Cuban artist, Ana Mendieta, who, uh, died after an altercation with, um, her husband, who was a more famous artist, Carl Andre, and the way that that has kind of been hushed up, uh, and just the sort of like, we have to, at the very least, I think we have to acknowledge both. We have to say, right. Hitchcock is a great director and he also did some really awful things. Polanski is a great director. Personally, one of my favorite films is Chinatown. And I would say Chinatown is all over this book, like the fingerprints of Chinatown, but also it's problematic and he's problematic in a, like major ways. And so I, I don't really know what the good answer is to like, yeah. how do you cherish art that's made by bad people or made in terrible means? But I think it's like a question we have to keep asking and have to acknowledge. It's very strange to me when I see uh, sort of narratives of like, you can't talk about it at all. And it's like, how do you, how, what do you mean? <laughs> right. what, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> One thing I love too, like talking about Cal is like how you really like showcase the differences in any Hollywood like role or job between a man and a woman. So Cal can literally do anything like Cal could have drugged yeah. one of his characters, mm -hmm. you know, an actor, an actress brought them to the hospital and was like, oh my God, like he's so method. Totally, totally. But, you know, somebody wants to eat something other than a salad and they're like, she's a bitch. Mm -hmm. 
she's like hard to work with you know and it just like I loved how you played on that role because I was like why like we swear on this podcast by the way okay good but I'm like (laughs) excellent (laughs) but I'm like why the fuck is nobody saying anything to Cal about some of the shit that he's saying and doing but then like Salma loses her sister yeah and it's like they give her the, like, I call it the Lindsay Lohan treatment where like totally. everybody wants to like talk shit about her. They want to gossip about her. They want to like make the things that she's doing without understanding her life. This like huge, big deal. And like, yes, this is like stuff that people who are not famous do. Like, you know what totally. I mean? Like somebody loses their sister and they like hit the bottle a little mm-hmm. too hard for a couple of weeks or like you're in mourning but when it's somebody who's a celebrity and you hold them at such a high pedestal especially as a woman yeah they are just like obliterated in the press totally totally and it's so interesting to me um and this was thank you for saying that too and this was that was definitely something on my mind about the way that um a really mercurial, difficult to work with man can be a genius. And it sort of lives under that banner of like, he's a genius though. Like even when I'm researching, you know, stories of bad director behavior, that's like always the asterisk of like, well, Hitchcock did terrible things to women, but he's obviously a genius. And like, yes, those two are hard. And it's like, but it's so interesting. And then um, Lindsay Lohan was definitely somebody who was on my mind, um, and you know, that whole kind of early aughts, uh, paparazzi culture of like, particularly young women, Paris Hilton, Nicole Richie, like all, who were just sort of tabloid fo- fodder. And mm-hmm. we look back and we're like, they're actual children. You know what I mean? Like, yes, yes, bad behavior and stuff, but like, nobody's asking the question of like, should we be putting these kids in the spotlight? Should we do they, you know, what's the help we need to get them? Or even if it was, they need help, it was less empathy and more sort of like they need help, you know? And so really trying to play with that too, of um, who gets what treatment and why, who gets called a genius, who gets called a problem. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that too, because I like always thought like even back in like the paparazzi days with like Lindsay Lohan and stuff, you know, I was like, I was just like, always like people are being hard on her. You know, like my yeah. friends were like, you just stick up for Lindsay because you love her. And I'm like, stick up for her because I feel bad for her. Yeah. Because what she's she doing right now. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like what she's doing right now in Hollywood are what you guys are doing on the weekend, but totally. you're judging her, you know, like what person in their twenties, like, wasn't like having a little bit too much to drink or like mm-hmm. experimenting with <laughs> drugs. Like, I understand not everybody does that, but like at the end of the day, like you live in a small town, you live in a big city, like you're two in the same, you know? Totally. And like, thank God that I didn't have any paparazzi following me around college. Like I was pretty tame, but like you could, you get pictures of people at the wrong moment, you know, and it's let alone somebody who may be combating an addiction or has access to, you know, everything at a crazy young age. Like I did for this book too, research I did, Mm -hmm. um, I read Little Girl Lost by Drew Barrymore, which was her, um, she wrote kind of a biography, but she was still herself very young, but it was sort of about Mm -hmm. her addiction. And she talks about, she was, had access to clubs at 10 years old and like that, just the, you have access to everything at too young an age, people are enabling you. And then people are taking pictures of you and saying like, it's your problem as if they got there by themselves. Well, and it's adults that they're around. Right. You know what I mean? Like it's they're they're around adults who have been doing this for years and years. And like, I also like really like, again, like the, the role between men and women, like, you know, it's like when, uh, like you said, like a picture gets taken that can just completely try to ruin your image. And it's like, if it's a man, it's like, think of how much a man can change in 20 years. But when it's a woman, it's like burner at the stake. Like right. she's not going to change. Like that's who she was back then. But like, mm-hmm. you'd never, cause like, even now I'm finding it very interesting how media is like kind of looking back on like Perez Hilton. Yes. Totally. And how like they like, you ate up all this gossip, but like everybody who like cheered this man on, like you guys suck, you know, yeah. like there yeah. was God, what was it? It was like Lindsay Lohan. I think she was on like David Letterman. Mm-hmm. And she was like trying to promote a movie. She had like just gotten in trouble, but like she was trying to promote this movie. And he's like, so when do you go to rehab? What'd you do again? Like, and she's like, I'm here to promote a movie. And then like, at one point, like she was like trying to play along, but she was like, these are not the questions you guys gave me. 
for my right. like pre-interview mm-hmm. so like there's all of these things I'm seeing because like I have this like weird Hollywood obsession so mm-hmm. like I'm seeing all these things on like my TikTok and on Twitter where it's like here are all of these women who are mm-hmm. treated unfairly and totally. then there's also there's also <laughs> an actor turned director who was like the peak fantasy in the early 2000s and then he was called problematic by a lot of women in Hollywood and everybody just stopped talking about him they didn't like you know say like this is screwed up they didn't give him like the Harvey Weinstein treatment Mm -hmm. but it was like they just stopped talking about it right like they were like Mm -hmm. do you believe this one woman and then when it was multiple women they were like oh do you believe all of them like if that happened that screwed up but he did this this and this you know like it's like he was a predator and like he like preyed on women that he worked with and put them in really shitty situations and did horrible things but he also did this with his career and it's like nobody looks at that with like say Lindsay Lohan because like I will die on the hill that like Lindsay Lohan might have been a little party girl she might have had some things going on, but Georgia Rule is one of the best movies in the entire world, and her performance <laughs> is, is amazing. So, like, leave Lindsay yes. alone. Totally. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Leave Lindsay alone. Lindsay Lohan stand here as well. And just, yes. yeah, just unfair how that follows you, too. You know, she has a big, ba- like, even now, I feel like, uh, I feel like our we, it, it's really great that we're re-examining these narratives through like, like you said, TikTok or Twitter, or there's that mm-hmm. podcast you're wrong about that had a whole series of like ladies of the nineties who have been maligned, like Tanya Harding and like Monica Lewinsky and kind of re-examining things. And from a 2020, I think they started around 2020. So 2020 lens and being <laughs> like, oh yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty up. fucked up that we talked yeah, about women yeah. this way and acted as if they alone were accountable for this behavior. And um and I feel like even now with Lindsay Lohan, and I hope the tide is changing. I mean, she just had a baby. Congratulations to her. But it's yes. sort of like this, like, oh, maybe she's finally getting her life turned around. And it was like, that was 20 years ago. That was 20 plus years ago that we're talking about these incidents. And there's still like an asterisk next to her name. You know, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, I totally Absolutely. agree. And like you said, like it was 20 years ago. And it's like, you know, people were saying like, she had to go to Mykonos to like be a normal human being. And it's like, no, like. The, this well, is maybe like, I think she I had you. to because everyone was assholes in LA. Everyone around her <laughs> totally. sucked. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone yeah. around her sucked. And there's like all of these videos about like paparazzi and like how they treat people and like how like no matter if you're like rude to them, like you can be an asshole and be like, get the fuck out of my face and punch their camera and you're the problem. Right. Or there's mm-hmm. people where like, I think it's like Selena Gomez was like, you guys are really starting to kind of scare me. Like you've got enough pictures of me. Can you please like leave me alone for the day? And they're like, we're, we have a job to do. Right. And it's just like, you know, like, and then you think of like the horrible positions that like celebrities, especially women, because let's be honest, like mm-hmm. the paparazzi is usually catching men celebrities when they're with a woman. Totally. Totally. Because they just like pray after all of these like this is like the gear like he's just women de- women women deserve better like this is like the name of our podcast at this point because like yes. I just get like so riled up over this stuff but like it just like I was almost a little shady when I made my like casting collage because there is an actor that like you may not want to say who turned director because he is still alive yeah. I got the I don't care like I say it say it let's do it like I mean allegations are like all alleged and like if you want to come after me like go ahead but like Cal was giving me very James Franco vibes oh yes absolutely the same thing like there were a lot of times when I was like Spider-Man came out I was like yep I'm definitely a homosexual (laughs) and then like I watched him kind of turn into this like person who's like, like people are... and, um, and creative yeah. and, and so serious and like, yeah totally you know like in the past like how was like the like hot guy with mm. like the perfect hair and then like as an adult people are like he's a little weirder than we expected <laughs> he's doing all of these things <laughs> and like but like everybody wanted to bone him when they were like a teenager so totally. like we're just gonna let it pass and I'm like yep oh my god this is giving me James Franco because like as his career like progressed like people were like 
he's kind of like fucking weird. And yep. then like mm-hmm. allegations come out, disappears. Nobody talks about them. Like nobody's yeah. like, is he gonna like? Yeah. Is there something that's gonna happen with this? And like. You know, totally stop making movies with him yeah, yeah totally they just like totally. but they don't talk about him anymore but like yeah. Lindsay lohan has a baby and they're like do you remember 20 years ago when she like <laughs> got busted with cocaine and it's like listen like there's... she was the only one in hollywood doing cocaine just her yes you know? yes she just was the Lindsay only one lohan. <laughs> and she yep. found it on the sidewalk and did it by herself there wasn't yep. somebody <laughs> who was like a lot older that like you know helped her get into this totally right at such yeah. a young age yeah, I was just made me think of like the Britney stuff too, though. Like yeah. when, like the paparazzi incident she had with like I think an umbrella is that the one that I'm thinking yes. of? Yes. But like she's finally pissed off and reacts. Yeah. And we just viewed it a certain way, but it's like if I had cameras flashing in my face, I would be overstimulated so quickly. Totally. And like I would want to react that way. Like I don't want you in my face. Totally. Yes. Totally. It's yeah. the, right. It's that it's. I think we view these things too, when they happen, when we get photos of them as like, they were having a totally chill day and they just snapped out of nowhere. And you're like, Mm -hmm. this woman's had cameras around her almost 24 hours for like 10 years. Like, of course she snapped. Now I'm not condoning snapping and like, but also it's so, we take it so out of context and then apply it as if that's how we would react when we don't have lives that are like that even a little bit, you know? Exactly. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like- it made me think of like the Britney thing where she tripped on the sidewalk and like almost like dropped her baby. Yeah. And yeah. everybody was like, Britney, like she should have had like more reasonable shoes on. She should have like had a like tighter yes. grip on her. Like she wasn't carrying the baby right. And it's like, she was trying to walk holding her child and you guys were like flashing cameras in her face. Like she couldn't see. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and she can't just stop what she's doing. Cause you guys are like hounding after her. Totally, Mm -hmm. totally. And it, or like in the early aughts, you know, when there might be moments where somebody would get like an upskirt shot of somebody and it would be like, look how unladylike they are that they're not wearing underwear and they're wearing this underwear. And you're like, somebody took a picture under her skirt. (laughs) That's crazy. You know, like that's horrible and violating. Yes. There was that period where everyone was like learning. I remember being told how to get out of a car in a skirt. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Like, happening right now yeah and I was like I'll just wear pants forever that's fine that that was what I decided (laughs) I would just be like if I were a woman I would be like every every we all have them yeah totally get out of here like if you want to look at one like it's yeah right it's just so like I just can't get over especially like now with like all of these things about like what is like considered like right and wrong and like I've always told Kate I'm like listen like I am going to shout from the rooftops, like my opinion on sticking up for women and believing women and everything, because not only like, should all men do this, but like, as a gay man growing up, like your support system was women. Like there were women that would like sucker punch somebody if they mess with you. And then now, like, I'm just like, listen, like I was like practically raised by women, like friends, celebrities, like my mom. And yeah. The fact that it was like Perez Hilton that was like showing people all over the world like pictures of these celebrities hoo has yeah. and like then trying to rub elbows with them, I was like, yeah. I cannot believe what is happening in our world. And it's also so, I mean, I'm definitely not trying to let Perez Hilton off the hook here when I say this, but like there was such a culture of meanness at the time that was so yes. acceptable that it's so interesting. Like it's, you look back now and it's really horrifying to be like, why was this? Like I read Perez Hilton and like, why oh, was yeah. this, you know, why was this, why did we think that talking about somebody like this was okay? And yet there was this yeah. weird moment in time. I mean, I think historically it's gone on longer, but like specifically in that kind of early aughts where it was like really fun to like take a swing at celebrities you know and to do yeah. that in just a really kind of mean-spirited way I don't it's not a not a kind time <laughs> no no right. especially well, in not, like crime not fair to just yeah. hate someone just because that's like the other tricky thing like when some people think you should hate all rich people or right. hate anyone yeah. who's famous like you can't just like assume that just because they've succeeded in an industry that could be toxic that they're just terrible people totally totally and there's a difference I, between holding people accountable and yeah. 
Yes. Uh, and I understand that maybe at, at that point too, maybe it felt like punching up because mm-hmm. I think that, in a lot yeah. of ways they're the ones with the power, but it's still like mm-hmm. empathy is free and limitless. Like we could all exactly. stand to hold it a little more, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I like, I hate that too. When like people are like, oh, so-and-so went on tour and they didn't have meet and greets or like, can you believe like some of these people are like not giving their fans enough time. And it's like, people expect so much out yeah. of famous people. It's like, I don't want to hear you like complain about like Taylor Swift not doing me in Greece. Like her job is to make music for her fans to enjoy. Mm -hmm. She goes on tour. She doesn't owe you anything else. Like you don't have to like know what her favorite color is. Mm -hmm. Like she doesn't owe you anything if you see her at a restaurant. Like, and it's just Mm -hmm. like so mind boggling to me. Like when people act that way and what they expect out of celebrities. Right. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Like, but, like you're their best friend yeah yeah like and they're supposed yeah. to treat you like that like do you just like okay if you're at home at night and it's midnight and some weirdo knocks on your door are you just gonna let them in and act like they're your best friend because like a celebrity should not do that when some of oh. you are like fucking unhinged and dangerous <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> yeah and they just like knock on your door and they're like i'm your fan and you're like okay I don't really care there's yeah. literally so okay not to go back to the true crime of it all but there's a young woman named Rebecca okay. Schaefer who was um an actress on a couple of sitcoms in the early 90s and she uh-huh. was murdered by an unhinged fan who did exactly that knocked on her door in the middle of the day in Los Angeles first he asked her for an autograph she gave him the autograph I think he asked her like to go to lunch with him or something and she was like no and so then she closes the door he comes back she opens the door and he shoots her. And it's actually the reason why celebrity addresses aren't listed in Los Angeles anymore is because of Rebecca Schaefer's case because of this very thing. But I mean, that's like, that's like the most far extreme (laughs) thing of it, but she's, she's somebody who I was thinking about on my, uh, stars six feet under two is like all these crazy store. I don't know. It's a, uh, I don't want to ever downplay the privilege that comes with fame either, but it's kind of both a pendulum of like privilege and also, makes you visible and puts you at risk in weird ways too. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I love true crime, but I'm very like emotional after it. (laughs) Like, it's like very like hard for me to like listen to something and be like, Mm -hmm. okay, like this, like the way that it affects people. But like, that's what I was going to say with this one. Like, I just love this fucking book so much. (laughs) (laughs) Like I loved the way you handled how people discussed, talked about the rumors of Tawny's murder. Mm -hmm. Because I have this like thing where like people can be very insensitive when it comes to true crime. People are downright disgusting and vile when it comes Mm -hmm. to Hollywood true crime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the rumors of what happened to Natalie Wood. Yeah. When it comes to Nicole brown simpson Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. all of these like people who were famous and they're like creating rumors and like bouncing all these theories off and they're so insensitive because at the end of the day like i remember like this is like the most horrifying thing but i remember because my parents are also my dad is into true crime my mom will like pretty much like watch anything she's so cool um (laughs) but my dad is like very into true crime like I grew up watching cops in America's Most Wanted when I probably shouldn't have been but like my dad's like they're fucked up people out there like be rude be weird like run do whatever you got to do but like this is the shit that can happen totally and I remember like him talking about the OJ Simpson case yeah. and there was a book that had come out <laughs> in the nineties, shortly after the court trial was over mm-hmm. and they actually had pictures of the crime scene in the book. Like yeah. nothing was blurred out. Nothing was like, leave a little to your imagination. And I was just, I remember like thinking to myself, like, I can't believe people want to see this. Like, I can't believe knowing the details knowing that somebody was murdered is yeah. not enough for some people yeah it's really strange and really like i mean as a crime author it's like hard like it's hard for me to fully con- like you know can uh disassociate from people's like interest yeah yeah, in the like (laughs) the salacious because it's also like that's sort of what i'm trafficking in too but mm-hmm. it is really interesting um 
you know, what does that do for us as people? Like, why do we want to see those photos or why do some people want to see those photos? Is it, is it that in a photo it's removed enough that it feels not real? It feels, you know, I, I don't know. I'm with you. The photos of Nicole Brown Simpson or the Black Dahlia, like things that come out that become like public property in a weird way. And that was like definitely yeah. something I was thinking about with this book too. And, you know, it's kind of embodied in Tawny, but I think there was a way in which like the nineties and the two thousands, as we've been talking, like female celebrities bodies were sort of public property. They yeah. still kind mm -hmm. of are, but like, hopefully I think we're getting a little better at it, but the way people would discuss like, you know, is Britney Spears a virgin? Did she get a breast implants? Like all these things. It's like, that's her body. That's, that's not your business, you know? And, mm -hmm. and then it becomes even more heightened. I think after somebody's dead too, that like, um, that somehow mm -hmm. that death because it's public knowledge belongs to people. And that somehow those photos belong to people or it's their right to yeah. see them or they should be allowed to see it. No, thank you. <laughs> is what I have to yeah. say to that. No, I don't think so. See, I think in my opinion, I mean, I'm just going to like swaddle you up and like hold you for the rest of my life. Cause I love you so much, but like <laughs> you like hit the nail on the head when you're like, this is some of the stuff that happens in true crime, but like as a crime writer, like, you know, you have to like separate obviously that, but like, I thought you did a fantastic job. Cause like, no matter what you write about or like how like gory or disturbing it is, like the way that you write your stories, especially with this one, because there are like fictional murders. And then you also discuss like Hollywood murders mm -hmm. that happen to real people. And it's like the way that you showed how like, it's kind of fucked up when like people talk about real people who died and then enjoying crime fiction. Like, yeah. if you wrote a slasher novel and you killed 20 people in, like, 50 pages, I'd be like, fuck yeah, like, go Allie, like, I love you, like, <laughs> right. get it, girl, like, give me more blood. But, like, if you wrote, you know, something about, like, Nicole Brown Simpson, like, mm -hmm. I know that you would write it in a way that was not salacious, that was not, like, gossipy and, like, disheartening, you know? So, like, Thank you. that's what I loved about this is, like, how you especially with like the the tour and everything because like I had never heard of those and oh yeah if you California. guys ever come out to LA we should go on one together just put that out I there. would <laughs> I would but like yes. I was just like just reading it and I was like oh my god like she's making me think so much about how people handle true crime and crime fiction and like how they like treat them in the same and that like shouldn't be like I remember like when I lived in Boston, there was, they called it, <laughs> this was like over 10 years ago. So I don't know if they do it anymore, but like, I just thought it was like so fucked up that I went on this like ghost tour oh, of yeah. Boston. And I was like, oh my God, like, I wonder if they're just going to show like haunted houses and stuff or like apartment buildings that have like rumors or urban <laughs> legends. And like, they're taking you around Boston, showing you where like victims of the Boston Strangler were murdered. Yeah. And I was like, this is like a true crime tour, but like right. calling this a ghost tour to like get your pennies just seems really messed up to me. Totally. It's like, it makes it kind of fun and flippant and like Halloweeny and spooky and stuff. And yeah. you're like, yeah, people actually died here. Like people, ex you know, experience real yeah. trauma here, the worst moments of their lives, you know? Yes. Yeah. 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 And like, that's the thing that I was just like, oh my God, like, could you imagine like being like, oh, a ghost tour, like, it's kind of like a haunted hayride, and then, like, right. you're, like, okay, like, I just couldn't imagine, like, putting myself in a position where, like, if I were murdered or something horrible happened to me, and I'm leaving all these people that I love and, like, hopefully love me back behind, that, like, I just couldn't imagine, like, my mother going on, like, a tour or something and then being, like, here's where your son was, like, stabbed 32 times and, like, they totally. found his, like, liver, like, on his lampshade and, like, isn't that fucking cool? <laughs> like, let's go on to the next one. Like, I'm just, like, oh, my God, like, this is so weird. Like, yeah. I love true crime, but like, I don't need the details when it comes to that. Totally. There is like a way in which when something becomes true crime, which is also such an interesting term, right? Like what makes something true crime versus like a murder or like, and it, I think it tends to break along like privilege and racial lines. Like we don't call, you know, a murder of like people of color in Los Angeles. It doesn't usually be called true crime the same way the Black Dahlia does. Like it's really like very yes. heightened in this weird way, but like yeah. it almost, it's like it it confers almost this sort of like, I, I know I said this earlier, but like your public property in some way that you somehow become part of like a conversation or an imagination in this weird way where it's like, but this was a person's life. They didn't ask for this. They didn't ask to be, become the symbol of whatever you're putting onto them. It's really strange. 
It yeah. Is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's just completely crazy. And like you said, like, especially like in Hollywood. And I was like thinking about that with your book because I never really... I never really thought of it that way. Like, I've always been like, you know, when it comes to like people who are murdered and true crime and podcasts and documentaries and stuff, like some people are just like, Ted Bundy was so hot. And I'm like, Ted Bundy was a fucking serial killer. Like, are you yeah. kidding me? Like, and that's yeah. like something like in the new Jessica Knoll book, like that's, you know, loosely based off Ted Bundy is like how she said, like, everybody's like, he's hot, he's charming. And she's like, there were like court records yeah. of people being like, he was picking his nose in court. Yep. And also like, like, isn't it such a weird, why would we ever say a serial killer is hot? Like what's also, he was mid at best as the kids say, but also like what was, I don't, it's such a weird thing to, to kind of attach that to, to somebody who's a serial killer as if we already have this sort of, yeah, exactly. Like, okay. Uh, like we already have this sort of mystique built around serial killers then to also be like, he's handsome is very strange, you know? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, unless it's like fiction. Yeah, totally. Because yes. like I ski That's all what right. I was gonna say. It's always different for me because if you're <laughs> writing fiction, you're writing fiction. Yeah. Sure. Like, yeah. Yes. Like That's ski okay. Ulrich and Scream different. is like probably my gay awake awakening. Like I saw Ski <laughs> Ulrich and Scream and I was like, oh my god, that is the most beautiful man I've ever seen. But like Ted Bundy or something, like it's just like you kind of like see how when yeah. the like serial killers like evolved in time it was like is it the creepy janitor is it the deranged trucker and then like all of these you know real cases started to happen and to get like more spotlight and like people were like Ted Bundy was hot and it was like no Ted Bundy was an average Joe you guys just want him to be like fucking Michael Myers like you want him to be hideous like you know you want him to be like the crazy trucker with like three hairs on the back of his head and like three teeth like yeah. what you know what I mean like it's like one thing to be like like when everything happened with like allegedly I'll say allegedly it's okay and I don't get sued <laughs> you gotta go fucking court because of you care but like when all of the things came out with like army hammer I was like That's what I was thinking. this is yeah. so disheartening because yeah. he is like so handsome and he seems so nice and it's like knowing everything I know now I'm not gonna be like he's fucking hot like no I'm gonna be like it was disheartening in the time because I watched call me by your name and I was like if he ever gets divorced I'm gonna marry Army Hammer like I'm gonna (laughs) be like there on one knee like ready but like now I'm like if I saw Army Hammer at like the grocery store I would be like you missed out Get, get out of here. Well, he yeah, would probably be at a like different it. kind of grocery store, which is a really terrible cannibal joke, but I saw an opportunity I'm a, had to make I, it. <laughs> I was, I'm a vegetarian, so I'd probably never run into him. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love you so much. Back at you guys. Oh my God. Oh my God. When you're both uh, like, I'll just be like the third person in this podcast. Uh, gladly. So anytime. Good. I know. Oh my God. I love you. I love you so much. (laughs) It's mutual. It's mutual. Um, I was also going to say, you made me think of something there too, with like, yeah, there's like a way in which we really want serial killers. Like, I think I told, I'm with you in fiction. I actually think it can be an interesting thought experiment of like how charming somebody is, like how they appear versus like who they are, you know, like that, that there's mileage to run there for forever. But in the, it's, it, we want our serial killers to have mystique in this weird way, you know, like we, We want them to be smart or charming, or maybe it's, maybe that's just something human that like, we like to believe that they're somehow superhuman or other. And I actually think most serial killers are probably pretty banal, like not, not people who are actually all that interesting other than the fact that they've Same. committed these horrible acts, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I totally agree with you. And it's like, I, listen to podcasts all the time and like I'm always like watching like a true crime documentary and like falling asleep to it because like I like if I could go back in time like I would be like a criminal psychologist because like I think it's so interesting how they can go to a crime scene or like pick up on you know like oh this is like a white male like 30 to 35 has issues with his mother single like five foot like nine you know like probably one eye that closes more than the other like it's just like so crazy to me how they can like totally. they do that and like I always am just like blown away at every time it is like some mediocre man yeah. with like 
you know, rage issues who doesn't treat a woman right and has like a Confederate flag in his living room. Yes, absolutely. Like Mm. speaking of like the Gilgo Beach murders, the serial killer they just arrested in New York and stuff. And it was fascinating to me. I do remember one of the articles I was reading was talking about the ways in which the profile that they had made back in 2010 was pretty accurate to who he was. And that he... I mean, when I looked at that guy, it's not like I, I don't I, I try not to ever like profile anybody, but like when you find yeah. out that he was the the person who's been arrested for allegedly committing these murders, there we go. We're not gonna get sued. Um <laughs> he looks very much like if he was the if he was a suspect on SVU, you'd be like, Yep, like that dude, yeah. you know, like it's so yes. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I it's know. almost like like at times you think that like true crime is stranger than like crime fiction. Absolutely. But then in, in this case, I'm like. Well, things are starting to make sense here. Like this, if I saw this man in a grocery store, like I would be like, okay, all my lady friends, like get behind me because <laughs> totally. like, I'm going to like keep you. And also they like announced yesterday that he was a Trump supporter. So let's just say that some cliches, <laughs> some Not cliches say Not no surprised. more. Not Say no more. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They said he was like a Trump supporter. I saw that it yesterday and I was like, okay, why are you announcing this? Like everybody believed that. Like I knew this before. Right. I knew it in my heart. It was true. I knew this know? in my yeah. heart. He's an architect. And when you heard how he like talked about himself on video, yep. I was like, oh my God. I think we God. know who he voted for. That could be like, the yeah. first. not that there weren't, speaking of Ted Bundy, allegedly one of the um, democratic serial killers, but I do feel like that could be a place to start is the uh, Trump voter rolls and be like, who here has shady past? You know, I will gladly go through them and see what I can find. Yeah, <laughs> Dares on it. Project. Yeah, I want to. I'm not going to read another book until 2025. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to solve some stuff. <laughs> Kate's like, I haven't heard from Garrett in a week. <laughs> He doesn't want to do podcasts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! The next time you see me, it's just going to be like. Papers. <laughs> and we've got this guy. And we've yeah, got there's this. like stamps. <laughs> oh my oh god, my that gosh. is so funny. Oh my god, I love you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what else do you like- want to what oh else yeah, do you I was want to mention say, about... I feel like I'm bringing us to the brink of like, how much can we say without getting sued? You know, so my apologies. Right. Oh no, <laughs> we're not worried about that. I'm not I just about am enjoying the conversation so oh, much with you. But me I too. also am like, at the end of the day, like we're still here. So like, if there's anything <laughs> else we want to discuss about like one of my favorite books of 2023, oh, like yes. if there's anything you like to talk about with this book or mentioned with I mean we've hit some pretty good things I yeah, also I mean, did not spoil anything by the way I'm so I know I know. really and <laughs> I'm so proud of myself I don't know how the fuck I did it but I'm very like, impressed <laughs> I did not like there were like things I was like thinking and I was like Mm, nope don't say that go with the James Franco theory <laughs> totally <laughs> the James Franco of it all absolutely yeah. absolutely yes. uh oh no I I think we covered a lot of it you know and I this has been like a really fun conversation too uh yeah, yeah it was it was a it was weird because it was both such a dark book and the subject matter of it is so dark like ultimately uh yeah. that that wasn't fun to write but also it was extremely fun to write you know it was like this weird tension of like I get to really let my like Hollywood freak flag fly and like just go in on the stuff I wanted to talk about to the point where it was like my wonderful editor who's no longer at Putnam but was at Putnam when she was working with me had to be like some of this is too inside baseball and I was like what do you mean people don't want 15 straight pages of like my favorite Hollywood conspiracy theories and she was like just rain it in, rain it in just a little bit. So I will gladly take those out. Turn into blog posts. Yeah. 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 Happy to, happy to. I have a lot to say. That's um, amazing. <laughs> yeah. If you pre order the book and right. send me yes. your email address, like <laughs> call this number. Things, right? I'll talk to you about my favorite yes. Hollywood like. Oh my God. Crime that would things. be amazing. You would have to yes. block me. I'd be like, okay, I'm getting ready to go to bed. Can you tell me a like, story? I'm bored. Like, yeah. Like, just like. <laughs> what are you Gladly, doing <laughs> anytime anytime oh my god yeah. no I love it well that's what I was going to like one of the things I wanted to say tonight too is that I loved like when it comes to like the plot <laughs> doc is going fucking ancient back oh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Ugh, this little ugh, this little bastard he's like so so good <laughs> and then like the minute I'm like done work he's like okay it's Tara from tiny town time like 
little psycho. I get it. My, uh, my parents have a Pira doodle. And so whenever I babysit her, if I do any oh, zoom or anything, she's just like, why are there noises in other places? And just like this big bark in the background. So I, I totally yeah. get it. My parents are like, why is he so hyper? Like <laughs> our other dogs weren't this hyper. I'm like, you guys had pugs. Like they come out of the right. womb lazy. And like, <laughs> yes. they're like ready to nap and eat. And that's it. And that's how I live like, like this little guy like wants to run around and he totally. like, like you don't make eye contact in 30 seconds. I'm going to bark until like, oh. you, like he's just so funny. Oh. But um, mm-hmm. my favorite thing about okay well I have every favorite thing about it but <laughs> one of my favorite things about the hurricane blonde that I I think I told you in a dm was I love how when it comes to like the plot the characters and like the true grit to the story like it's like so dark and gritty and menacing and like terrifying but when it comes to describing the setting you're like this is fucking beautiful oh. like you know you take that that whole um like I guess like yeah good one good one seriously good one I'm I'm gonna steal that and use that in future interviews just (laughs) so you know case (laughs) yeah but like you take this like because you know like anybody is like oh my god like Hollywood Los Angeles like it's so beautiful and and then like when you think about some of the horrible things that happen it's just like I loved how this was like one of the like bleakest and most gritty and like sad and horrifying plots to a novel but you really like wrapped it up in like that bubblegum pink dream of like Los Angeles thank you so much I I have um like a little a little phrase that I think in my head sometimes that like is something I'm always interested in whether it's my work or other people's is like I call it candy coated horror where it's just like yes. this really like beautiful shell and then you get into it and it's just like oh yes. nothing is what it seems here and I I do think that you know there is so much of that in Hollywood too like that you do not have to scratch the surface yeah. very hard to find like access to everything in the world the most beautiful people in the world and yet real true darkness so I'm so glad that that worked for you and that's like, oh my god that's something I love that it. I'm always interested in <laughs> I love it yes. so much like when I was reading this book I'm like oh my god this is so fucking good and then like two minutes later I'm like this is so fucking good and my mom was like what like what are you reading and like What's why happening? do you like well, yeah like why do you love this so much and I was like okay like the only way I can describe this is like it's set in Los Angeles Hollywood and like the only way I can describe this is like, say that you're watching like Selling Sunset mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they like, and you just like walk by a room and there's like a severed head in it. Oh, yes. oh I love that. <laughs> it's also, like, it's like right you watch <laughs> like the hills and like Selling Sunset and everything. You're like, oh my God, like Los Angeles, Hollywood. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. And it is, but like horrifying things happen just like totally. they do everywhere else. Like it's not always going to be like, this like dream of like Mm -hmm. bubble perfection bubblegum pop perfection but I was like that's what I said I was like you know you watch Selling Sunset and you're like oh my god like look at these houses I'm like imagine if there was like a closet full of dead bodies Gare you just came up with the tv show like that's you should pitch that to somebody because I would watch that (laughs) I think I don't know that might be your next book there we go it might be (laughs) that's true (laughs) <laughs> I'll be you'll be calling me and you'll be like what do you think of this and I'll be like you're a fucking genius I love you <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll be like here's one of my dark Hollywood bedtime stories <laughs> oh my god yes yes. yes yes I know I know I'm like I already can't wait to read it again oh thank you thank I already you. can't so wait to read it again you. I feel that way about like this and the trap by Catherine Ryan Howard are like the two mm-hmm. books that like I just cannot get out of my head you know, like, you yeah. know, when you like finish a book and you're like, okay, that was really good, but I'm excited to read like what's next. And it's mm-hmm. like, ever since I finished this book, I was like, oh my God, like that was amazing. Like everything's wrapped up. Everything's answered. I'm so satisfied. I love that so much. That was a fucking like amazing odyssey that I just like went on cover to cover. Mm-hmm. But like, I find myself like reading like <laughs> other books or reading other stories and I'm like I wonder what Salma's like doing now <laughs> I love that thank you so I'm much like, such a compliment yeah like I'm just like I wonder like if we can just have like a spinoff of like every secondary character has their own book 
like that like Ooh. stems off from this and it's just like a 50 book series <laughs> I like that, I that idea read, actually that I could just read over and over and over again because the thing that like I love about this is like you know like I said a hundred times tonight like you explore like the underbelly of crime in Hollywood and it's not it's not like the crime everywhere else it's like in its own like just like complete entity totally. and I'm like you know if you just kept this like one setting like your entire writing career is like set for you because there's so many different things to explore it's so if true, this turns into like a hundred book series I'm just <laughs> We're cool with it. over and over again for like the rest yeah. of my life well, thank you. That's that's a huge vote of confidence. I appreciate that. That uh, that is, and I like that idea though of like looking at it from different angles would be really interesting. Yeah, especially I mean, with the ending, which without spoiling anything, I really, really liked like the ending, ending, very end. Thank but you. You definitely pick that up, and that's all I'll say. <laughs> totally, totally. I yeah, I don't want to spoil anything either. I'm I really struggled with the ending, so I'm really glad. Oh yeah. Uh, that that worked for you because for me it was like, okay, it's so funny we're talking around it because we don't want to spoil it yes. for anybody. But uh, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I've been doing so good. You amazing, and I know. I just, <laughs> but given the nature of everything that happens in the book and everything that Salma finds out, uh, it didn't. I couldn't find an ending that was like felt like it felt like the ending would have to be a whole different book. Do you know what I mean? Like that there yeah. that it's, that it's so there's no clean way to just be like, all right, here's mm -hmm. a bow on it. So, so I did kind of end up writing an ending that uh, I think some readers may find more pleasing than others, but it was, yeah. that was kind of where I was coming from with it was that there's, and I, I actually do think, all right, we've hit like one of my favorite topics actually. So I'm sorry. I know you guys are probably like, we have no, lives. Can we? Like, let's no, go. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to hang up. Even when you guys are done, I'm just going to be sitting here like, well, one of them might dial back. <laughs> yes. um, one of one of my favorite bugbears is, you know, so crime fiction is fiction, right? It's not real. But there's a way in which I struggle with crime fiction that wraps up really easily because or like puts a kind of like we've returned the world to normalcy because in real life. <laughs> even if you solve the crime, there's still that hole there. There's still like, it didn't get fixed. You know what I mean? Like justice is real and important, but it doesn't make the bad thing go away. And so I kind of, yeah. And so I kind of struggled with this one to write an ending that was not going to just feel like, well, we solved it everything's good now because it's not, you know, particularly for mm -hmm. my main character, her world has exploded in a variety of different ways. And so how how do you write an ending that kind of honors that while also still being satisfying and uh you know i i did it the best way i knew how to at that at that time but it that is something i think about a lot is like inherently you want to satisfy the reader's expectations you want to find something that makes it feel conclusive but i also think that there's some sort of weird cultural disservice in being like just solving the crime fixes it and it doesn't it never does you know Yes, oh, I'm I think that's obsessed. a great way to see it without spoiling anything. And then what I would add too is like, I feel like the things that needed to be like explained are explained. Mm -hmm. So it's not that that it's not that that's what you like right. the ending is headed towards. But I someone on Threads actually a couple of weeks ago asks like what it makes a good ending to you or whatever. So it's making me think about it. And when I was thinking about it, I was like, most of the time, what makes me say like that was a good ending is that like, it felt almost inevitable given all of the information you learned about the character. Yeah. And so what I am trying to say <laughs> carefully is that, um, <laughs> is that the information you give us about Salma still kind of answers the question like I feel like mm -hmm. I feel like if you're paying attention it doesn't feel too open-ended is what I'm trying to say okay good good that's I yeah. really appreciate that and like the, I totally agree that an ending yeah my favorite endings of books are ones that feel sort of surprising but inevitable like of course it yeah. couldn't end any other way you know like then there mm -hmm. are um I mean I'm thinking of in particular 
Ashley Winstead's books where you get to the ending and you're sort of like, we love her oh, too. I yes. <laughs> love her. I'm obsessed yes. with her. And like, she goes so hard in her books. And yet there's yes. this, like, she really does. I'm so admire it as a writer too, of like, that's incredible. And I love that your editor didn't say, oh, we can't do that. Like, and I was very grateful for my editor too, to be fair. Like I handed her, this was always what the book was in terms of like the big, some of the big plot points. And she didn't flinch. Cause I was a little worried. She was going to come back and be like, ah, <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Um, but like, yeah, endings that feel sort of like, oh, I didn't totally see that, but also like, of course it's that way. Like, yes, yeah. that's for me what a, what a great ending is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm such like a softy and like, I always like tell Kate this, like for somebody who like loves like crime fiction mm-hmm. and like my life, like I love like slasher movies and like horror movies, but like, I always like tell her like, I'm like so sad when they're over because yeah. I'm like, I love like a bleak ending because to me it feels more realistic. Mm-hmm. You know, like I always like tell people, I'm like, I like cried at the end of scream when i watched it because i'm like okay like you know who's under the mask but like all of these people are like dead they left behind yeah. all these families like nev yeah. campbell's traumatized and like who wants to see that happen totally. but like i'm such like a softie but like i just like obviously got a little teary at the end of oh. the hurricane blonde i'll just oh, say I'm that so that's the I'm only so thing i'm going to talk about with the ending <laughs> That's all. That's all we're gonna say. I got teary too. So that's all I can say because I just like, like you said, like it's just that's how that's how life is. Like it's not like yeah. Oh, we're just gonna like solve this and like okay, like yeah. The grief doesn't go away just because you the storm cloud's gone. Yeah, no, like there's like still like even if you get an answer, like it's still everything is like left behind as it was. You just know the who, what, when, and where or how, but. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I think after this, like you're going to be known to your editor as like the woman that we will never say no to. (laughs) I sure hope so. Although actually, you know, I do appreciate an editor. Like there are definitely things that my editor has made stronger in my writing where she's been like, this isn't it. And I'm like, okay, you know, like it is really helpful. Yeah. 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 Meaning, I guess I'm saying I don't want to become like one of those terrible directors I write about when people are afraid to say no to. (laughs) Never never oh my god you're gonna be a fucking little angel baby for the rest of your life I promise you that so nice of you that's good vibes like no you have everything going for you and more I am so impressed with you and this story and I cannot wait to see like I just can't wait to like follow the rest of like your writing career thank you Garrett that's so nice of you thank you I just can't wait to read the hurricane blonde again either (laughs) you know and see everyone else posting about it too oh my god I know I'm gonna be like a little like lunatic like on pub day I'm just gonna be like literally like searching the hashtag and like sharing like everyone's like post people have been doing like so I really I am not um I am not a strong social media in the sense that like, I don't have like a photographic eye. I don't compose things very well. And so I've been so impressed by seeing like shots that people have done of the hurricane blonde, yeah. like out in the wild. And I'm like, this is so incredible. Oh I God, like prop it I against know. a pillow and I'm like, that's the best we can do. You know, like that's, that's as far as I go, but like, I'm, right. it's amazing. It but definitely yeah. sparked a lot of like creativity with me. I yeah. will say that I would have oh, done like yeah. a pool shot. Oh my God. I know. I'm so I remember to... you were sending me stuff forever. <laughs> I'm so excited to post some things. I just like can't freaking wait. I was going to take a pool shot, but I got a hole in my liner. So it would have oh, been no. like, it would have been the most depressing <laughs> picture ever. It would have been like the hurricane pond, <laughs> like one inch of water. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> I would have been like, like the aerial flood pond. <laughs> yeah, my pool is empty, but my heart is full because I love. Oh my this. gosh! Like that would have been an amazing caption, though. <laughs> oh my god! It would have been like the ugliest photo in the entire world, and like I would never do that to you. I, I, I would do it to James Franco, but I wouldn't do it to you. I think we could all do it to James Franco, fine, frankly, yeah. but yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I'm so excited for you. And I Thank like you. wish you like nothing but the most fucking amazing pub week. Oh, because like you, you have to celebrate all week. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be cupcakes galore. Like it's gonna oh, be Oh my god. I'm yeah. gonna get myself cupcakes <laughs> for you. Like <laughs> thank you. You should. Yeah, yes. Yeah, treat yourself. In cupcakes. She just might as well be a co-host. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm like, oh my God. Like, let's just talk about like this is like the Hollywood with Hallie podcast. I love that. (laughs) That is like, (laughs) 
all us. Hollywood. Hollywood. That's Hollywood. what my dad calls me. Oh my actually. god, I love that. I, I know that's. Yeah. Uh, I figured someone had said it. Before yeah, me. my dad I never calls me that. About that. I love puns. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. Oh my god. Oh, so much fun. So much. Fun. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much for like hanging out with us tonight. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you oh for my having God. me. Oh, what, are so you, what are you reading? We always ask people well, what yeah. they read recently. I, so I am I currently like. reading um, Beware the Woman by Megan Abbott, uh, mm-hmm. which is, she is my goddess. Uh, and I have been lucky enough to meet her a few times in passing. Oh, nice. I've never been cool about it. It's been like <laughs> uh, very much just like, I'm such a fan. Um, and, uh, it's incredible. Uh, it's, she's just so smart. She's such a good writer. She's so smart. She's so subtle. I just am really, really loving it. Um, and, uh, the next up I have, um, Oh, I actually have an arc of Ashley Winstead's, uh, midnight is the darkest hour that I'm really excited. excited So yeah, I'm diving into that one soon too. Mm -hmm. Buddy read. (laughs) Hell yeah. Yes. Hell yeah. I'm fucking really annoying with buddy reads. So I'll tell you something like, I like, I like, I like a paragraph, like every page, especially with Ashley. I love Winstead. that. Like, I like literally like when Ashley Winstead will like send me like a signed copy of something. Like mm-hmm. she always is like, Hey bestie. Cause like, I like literally read her debut and I was like, so unhinged and like so annoying, good. but I was like, Oh my fucking God. Like, I love this. I love this. I love that. Da, da. And I was like, I'm so sorry that I'm like blowing up your DMS. And she was like, Oh my God. Like, no, like she's like the sweetest person. And like, she really is. I was like, we're like besties now because of how much I talked to you about like oh. one book, even though it's yours. So like now we like jokingly call each other like bestie, but like, so cute. that is like, even if it was a buddy read of like only me just like telling the author about <laughs> <laughs> it. I just like am totally down for a buddy read anytime. I'm down I'm too. Just, I'm down too. And Ashley Winston is amazing. I saw her now. Sorry, I'm just like turning this into the like, let's just keep talking. But um Ashley Winston, I, I yeah, yeah, I met her um in person at the LA Times Festival of Books. She was doing a book signing there and she came yeah. out. It was like a really hot day. It was like 90 degrees. She comes out in this pink sequin sparkle yes. jumpsuit and I was just like you're a rock star like you're so cool and I was just like wow like she's like the Taylor Swift you know like she like comes yes. and steady. it was incredible I remember <laughs> seeing that picture in her stories and being like I can't even wear a shirt I'm so hot right now and totally. she's like wearing a freaking suit <laughs> totally I know I felt the same way I was like in a bodysuit and like jean shorts and I was like oh yeah. god this is like I didn't she did it right you know like <laughs> oh my god she's yeah she and like I she's could so like cool. listen to her talk mm-hmm. like Forever forever like yeah. you know how they have those like the sleep apps where it's like Harry Styles oh, yeah. like reading like <laughs> I want one of her I like could you I could listen to her talk so much like we did we did a live together on Instagram and like on Instagram live like I get like a little like weird because like sometimes you're talking to an author and you're like what was your inspiration and they're like well this character just kind of like spoke to me and then like I just like kind of like created this plot and I'm like I don't know what to say after that because like because <laughs> like that's magical to me totally. but like okay. with her I was like you know like an Instagram live I'm like I usually do like 30 minutes like if we go over like I'm totally yours for the evening but like around a half hour like so people have like other things to do totally I kid you not our first live was two hours oh my god amazing <laughs> and like literally like I had to be like I'm so sorry like I'm taking up so much of your time and she's like She's like, I could keep going, but like, I just feel like there's probably like three people watching at this point, but like, (laughs) it was like so much fun. And I was like, I just want to like play this, like help me like fall asleep just to like hear her talk about like, oh, totally. And like, yeah, there should be like an Ashley Winstead ASMR channel. Like if she wants to branch out, like, let's do it. You know, (laughs) could you imagine? And now she's like legit in like every genre. Oh, I know. I know. Crazy prolific. Yeah. It's really, I'm very impressed. I want to know what her secret is. Cause I like, it's a grind for me. It takes a long time, but she's like turning out books like that. I'm so impressed. I know. Yeah. I kind of, yeah. Like when, when her like rom-com came out, I was like, okay. So like in my dreams, I hold a knife. I'm thinking to myself, like this might be like her rom-com might kind of be like 
some of like the darker Colleen Hoover books Mm -hmm. like plot wise like it's like what I'm thinking which like I'm totally into that so like I don't care then I read it and I was like how the fuck am I like laughing my ass off like 10 pages in and this is so like like I feel like I'm like skipping you know like I'm like (laughs) like this is like the land of happiness and then like I read like in my dreams I hold a knife and I'm like okay like no matter what happens in my life I'm never gonna forget like the most like fucked up ending to a book that I've like ever read in my entire life so good so and I like don't want to spoil that book either but like no I agree with you that last page was just like perfection yes I I know she's oh my god she's a talented woman of uh many facets as we all are but yeah I'm so impressed that she can excavate like two very different sides of herself in her work like it is it's truly extraordinary it's yeah. like that like meme that shows the two houses on the beach and one's yes. like Barbie pink and the other yes. one's like black. And I'm like, these are my two personalities. Yes. And I'm like, Ashley Winstead, like, yes. it's like, is this your like lane? Cause like, I like imagine her having her own like street. Totally, yeah. totally. Or she's like, yeah, she's like literally Barbenheimer. <laughs> like, That's what I was oh going to say, yes. Barbenheimer too. Those things <laughs> totally. like cracking me up. Yeah. yeah, that's like literally like what it like feels like to be like an Ashley like Winstead stan at this point. Totally. Yeah. Like she'll emotionally devastate you and then build you back up, you know? I want yes. like one of those like bookish like um, like apparel companies to like start mm. doing like the Ashley Winstead line. Yes. That would be cool. Yes. I like think the ones there's where a market the for that. And just characters. Totally. I don't know. Like, I'm not like creative enough to like draw anything. Like, I like <laughs> I would have author- authors like blocking me left and right. But like, <laughs> that would just be like so much fun to be like. This is like kind of what I imagine to have somebody else do it. Totally. Right. You know what I totally. mean? Like, yeah. could you imagine like a T-shirt with like a blonde wavy hair and like a wave, mm. like a like hurricane wave? For the oh, that face. would be so cool. And that then would be saying so like cool. the hurricane blonde under it. Yeah, yes. totally. It would be amazing. It, yeah. And I don't have that talent either. I am also like not a graphic designer at all. Uh, so I'm very impressed when people have that skill, but like, that would be so cool. <laughs> if anybody listens and they want to make like hurricane blonde <laughs> t-shirts, that's like what I envision. And like having the so hurricane cool. be the face because like, you know how yes. like people just like don't care about the identities of like women in like true crime and especially Hollywood true crime. Not to get back on my pedestal, but like I love it. I get, mean, get up on it. I want my hurricane blonde t shirts. So I do too. You just want the t shirt. I do. I just want to like have my own like company where I just like make websites based off all of my favorite books. And that's going to be my that. like first design. I feel like you could absolutely do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can have a podcast where we do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want apparel. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I want apparel so bad. I want like killing the tea apparel. I want I us to have like special editions of like all of the. I just want my like hurricane blonde t shirt. No, and we do it forever. We can have like favorites of the year shirts. Ooh, that started. would be cool. And it would like I mean, the we're back of talk it. About books forever. The oh, back yeah. of it would look like like a band tour shirt where like instead yes. of the city it could be the book name and the date that you read it that would be so yes. cool oh my yes. fucking god friends I think we're going on tour <laughs> could I you imagine sure. the three of us on tour that would be so much fun it really yeah, would I think be. we'd have a lot of fun <laughs> I want to yeah. eat at one Chipotle in every state <laughs> I'm down I feel like that's this an achievable dream venture. and one Taco Bell because I'm a fan perfect of yeah. That's my Barbie Heimer. <laughs> That's my Barbie <laughs> Heimer thing. <laughs> like 22 year old, like frat boy part of my personality is like, fuck yeah, dude, let's get Taco Bell. And then like, oh, totally. the, like I should be like a 36 year old grown up is like, <laughs> okay, like we can go to Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle's fresh. <laughs> yeah, it's like, true. they just like made the guac this morning and like Taco Bell's yeah. like, this guac's been in our freezer since the Taco day Taco Bell's like, what's guac? Like, <laughs> yeah, they know. don't even guac. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've had Taco Bell guac and it's oh really oh my god it is like so weird I don't know why I keep getting it but like it almost has like it's almost like you ever seen like a meme or of like a house where they're like oh shit something happened and like everything's fixed with duct tape Uh uh-huh that's kind of like their guacamole like started off with like a good concept but they just kept like putting like lime juice in it like it's like very sour yeah Ooh. but it's like green so I'm like <laughs> imagining it's gonna taste better right it does but I'm like oh my god this is like a whole lime and like 
they like just like put an avocado like a, of avocado. They, it was just and like, they, like a showed it an avocado yeah just like yeah, it was just like is. a whiff like they just like kind of like went like this with like, like a fresh LaCroix. avocado and then, like, yeah. <laughs> That's like what it was. And I'm like, can I get a side avocado? Like guacamole. I don't know why I keep doing that to myself. <laughs> but yeah, that's oh, my like. I didn't dual. think we were going to cover today, but I'm so glad we did. Oh my yes. gosh. So, I mean, the funny story is sometimes I use an AI summary generator to like oh, write nice. the summary. But Uh-oh. what's hilarious is that multiple weeks in a row, it's like two upbeat people have a friendly conversation about diner food grilled cheeses that are, I'm like this is a book podcast and AI thinks we're just talking about food the whole time that's hilarious <laughs> so this is like full circle for us to be talking about Taco Bell and guacamole <laughs> that's incredible yeah. please have that be about- the name of the episode Taco Bell guacamole I mean, might need to be it's like women no. deserve better Taco Bell no. guacamole no. No, I want them to sponsor us one day. <laughs> I will like literally go ham. Like I will fist fight somebody for like a spicy potato taco from Taco Bell. Oh. But yeah. I also and those like, are delicious. I'm like, I'm best. pro Taco Bell. I'm a vegetarian. Mm, oh, yeah. So like I'll order anything and just replace the meat with like their potato. And it is like the happiest that I will ever be in my entire life. But like I am cracking up because like, <laughs> we have a podcast about crime fiction and like books, movies, and television. And like, I don't know how we like literally talk about like fictional ways people get murdered every day. And I'm like, I can like sway it back to Taco Bell. <laughs> Definitely it Taco was Taco Bell, Bell like, all along. <laughs> it's like Taco Bell or like, I talk about like grocery shopping in Canada or like, <laughs> like what my favorite like donut flavor is or like, I don't know. It's just like the weirdest thing. I don't know how we like managed to do this, but like, I know food like I just like black out like we talk about food and I'm just like oh my god Kate did I just talk about like Chipotle for like 45 minutes and she's like I can edit some of it out it's okay (laughs) he's like the editing genius and I just like never stop talking about (laughs) food Food is like an integral part of you know the human experience who doesn't want to pick up the hurricane blonde with like their favorite meal totally you know I know I, I mean? feel like I need to partner with Taco Bell and be like, for every pre-order like receipt you send me, I'll buy you a taco. <laughs> it does kind of have Baja Blast vibes, the cover. It totally does. It, it totally, totally does. Totally, totally, totally <laughs> to does. It full circle. <laughs> it totally does. Oh my God. I love it Incredible. too. And like your like campaign for it could be like this. And like the yellow from the blonde is like dripping into like the nacho cheese cup. Oh, I love that. And it could be like live moss until you don't or something. Like yes. <laughs> yes, until you don't. Yes. And or like there could be like a bus with like a taco on it, and it's like the murder moss tour, like yes. of Los Angeles. <laughs> I'm really well, hoping hopefully Taco Bell into- listens. There's like <laughs> Selma know, like being like here, like thank you for like joining us today on like the like you know tour and everything. Here's like your coupon for like your free like murder taco. Murder taco, <laughs> yeah, and it's like a red like Doritos shell Diablo or something. Sauce. Yeah. Oh Diablo hell yeah, sauce. yeah, yeah. The Diablo sauce because you're like gonna wish you die after you have that. <laughs> Oh my god, amazing. Yeah, we're definitely going on tour. Like, like oh, for there's sure. no way that like somebody's not gonna sponsor the three of us after this. Like it's gonna be like yeah. a book oh, yeah. tour slash podcast tour slash like Taco Bell journey for the three of us. And I am so excited. I'm gonna pack for sure. I just want somebody to have like an Oprah moment where they're like, look under your seats, there's Taco Bell. Yes. <laughs> you get Taco Bell. You, you, you. I mean, have fun, the two of you picking me up off the floor. <laughs> I don't even care if it's my own car and it's a week old taco. Like I would be like, oh my God, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is the way to my heart. Oh my God. I actually did get Taco Bell when I was reading this by the way I'm honored <laughs> because like with all of my favorite books I have this like weird like memory of like where I was and what I was doing when oh, I was yeah. reading it oh yeah and, I have that too yeah so like it was definitely like Taco Bell and um I think the next night I got Pizza Hut amazing nice. amazing two of my favorites <laughs> oh yeah hell yeah oh my god like <laughs> tacos and pizza like I'm sold yes, yes. pretty much oh, my yeah. diet and craft macaroni and cheese. 
Mm. <laughs> Without <With> spirals. <gasps> oh, yes, I know. No, 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 no. His grandma tried to sneak scrambled eggs in one time. Oh, she was, no. I was little and she was like, I don't think you get enough protein. So she like snuck scrambled eggs in my macaroni and cheese just to be like, sneaky. just, you know, try to be sneaky. And I thought like, you wouldn't notice. I called my mother like I was on the black phone of like that movie with Ethan Hawke. Like I was like whispering in the basement. Like <laughs> I was a kidnap. <laughs> like I was like, you need to go get me grandma's <laughs> Pretty and cheese. Get the fuck out of here. I'm like six years old. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, mom. You better drive fast. You don't know what these people are doing here. She's like, you'll never forget that story. I was like, no, I just never. Or how she had like the cookie jar and she was like, you can have a cookie if you want because like you were so good. And I like got up there and like, you know, like when you're like six years old and you're short as fuck, it's like a long climb to the cookie jar. So you're like, it's going to be a double stuffed Oreo. It's going to be like a chocolate. It was a big Newton. She kept oh, it. New. And Those I was like, lines, especially when you're, <laughs> you know, it was like that. And I don't remember what they were called, but like the devil food cake, like, I don't know if they were like slim fast cookies, but they were yes. like super dry angel yes. food with like covered in chocolate. Like yes. they were like the two cookies that you're like, I don't care if I ever have a cookie again, if this is what they taste like. <laughs> Yes, yes. Light yeah. all the cookies on fire. Yeah, like yeah. fuck that. No wonder I grew up with like a Taco Bell addiction. <laughs> like I was right. like, I will definitely not be addicted to cookies after this. But, yeah. Big <laughs> Newton is like childhood like, memories. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah. That's one of my childhood memories. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> oh my God. Well, Thank you. Everybody needs to get this book obviously yes thank you thank yes. yeah the only august thing 8th? 8th? august 8th yeah. yes yes yep. the only thing that i will spoil with this book is that i can guarantee it's going to be on my favorites of 2023 list at the end of the year oh yeah oh thank you i so and appreciate I that. that thank you yes. and i had so much fun making my imaginary movie poster oh i can't yeah. wait to see <laughs> oh my god it's so much fun yeah so that's fun. incredible thank you thank you guys for having me for like all oh my god the support and appreciation yeah. I mean it means so much especially you know as you're launching a book into the world and like it's so I so appreciate it so thank you well oh, yeah. we love you very much we and you are psyched to talk to you about it <laughs> oh my oh, god oh I was yeah. psyched to be here this is so fun yeah <laughs> I was yeah. like you are welcome anytime yes I might take you up on that just like me pop Any- up on the zoom like Yes. <laughs> Any Thursday night. Yeah. It's like, we're I, like, I will like literally give you a key to my house if you're ever in New York. Like, I'll just like mail it to you. Like, just like pop Perfect. by whenever you want. Um, but yeah, you, you are always so close. <laughs> <laughs> I said if she's ever in New York. <laughs> and if you guys are in LA, hit me up and we'll like right. take a true crime tour. Or one of my favorites actually is sorry, you guys are like, this woman is never going to let me get off the Zoom. And you're right. I'm never oh. going to. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, <laughs> we're here to it, stay. At Halloween time. Um, Paramount Studio Tours does our Paramount Studio does a tour like a Halloween spooky tour. I mean, not to mm-hmm. like talk about the ghost tour, but so they'll do. So the first mm-hmm. half of the tour is uh, at Paramount Studios and they talk about like, you know, ghosts they've seen there. And then the second half is at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery because the two share mm-hmm. a plot of land. And like, it's really fascinating. So you just like walk out of the door of the studio, like go around the corner and you're in the cemetery. And so then they'll like take you around to like the famous people who are buried there. It's really eerie and a lot of fun. So I'm just saying, if you're ever in LA, like October-ish, hit me up. We should do that. (laughs) Oh my God. Is that where Bo proposed to Stassi? I feel like it is. It might be. I am. He he proposed in in the Hollywood something cemetery because then it probably is hollywood forever they also have like big events there like they do movie screenings like during the summer and stuff i think it was was. yeah yeah Yeah. oh my god (gasps) now we really have to though i know uh yeah oh my god could you imagine that would just i would die i would like literally just like keel over and be be, like you'd become (laughs) a part of the tour i was gonna say you'd be right there so (laughs) They'd be like, they'd be like, oh, it's that podcaster that hates James Franco and Donald Trump. <laughs> yes. R.I.P. That's the tombstone. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Please etch a taco in my tombstone. That's all I ask. Sponsored That's by Taco Bell. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he died doing what he loved. 
<laughs> Talking shit yeah. about problematic men and eating tacos. I mean, yeah. oh my God. I, I mean, that is great. how I'm going to go out. I already know. <laughs> I like, think it's me too. <laughs> I, think yeah, I think that's like definitely how I'm going to go out. Like if I like probably like, if I like just die of old age on this podcast with like a Taco Bell in hand and be like, do you remember that rumor about James Franco? Like that. And then that's like the last thing that like I ever say. Incredible. Oh my God. <laughs> like what a way to go. Oh, truly. <laughs> I'll put together a montage of all the times you Kate said would make about. the best, like, in memory <laughs> of, like, TikTok. Yeah. Like, but I'd also oh have God. some of your, like, raunchy shit in there, too. Yeah, oh, some yeah, of my raunchy moments. Like, mm-hmm. instead of, like, the piano, like, angel shit music, like, it would be, like, Nicki Minaj in the back of it. Yes. yes. Incredible. Oh, my God. Yeah, I got yeah. you covered. Oh, I know. We, 100%. We never, we never want to die and have people say that we shine a light in a room that we walked into because no. it's not true for either of us. So no, I do not walk into a room and like the place stuff. up. I walk into a room like scowling at strangers looking for like the person that I'm supposed to meet. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> totally. I know it is that is so interesting that sort of like hey geography of people that happens where yeah I agree if I die young I I hope my best friends are like she was a salty bitch sometimes but we loved her a lot of the time you know yeah yeah there's like nobody on earth that like had like everybody loves totally like even if you just kept to yourself and didn't talk to anyone throughout the day like there's going to be some people that have met you no matter what the circumstances were I was like I fucking hated that bitch for sure for sure a hundred percent like nobody like I can guarantee you they're like they would have a hard time finding people to be like he lit up the room and he walked in like, <laughs> and if they did like I would have so many of my like ride or die friends that would be like the fuck he did like you did not know him <laughs> you should look that into was, this guy because maybe he killed him if he's saying this yeah know? that was like, a yeah. different that was either a different garrett or That's you're on the suspect suspicious. list yeah <laughs> that would be amazing 